Thank you. Welcome everybody to this session on the ARDC Research Link Australia project. Uh, so my name is Natasha Simons and I'm the Associate Director for National Information Infrastructure at the ARDC and I will be your host for this webinar. So next slide please, me. So I'd like to start by with an acknowledgement of country. So I'd like to acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet and pay our respect to their elders past, present and emerging. So Wunya from Turbul and Yagara country in Brisbane. Next slide, please, Ming. So the agenda for today, we will talk you through the Research Link Australia project. So I think some of you have heard about this and some of you uh, have heard a bit more than others. So we'll go through what the project is and how it came about. We will go through a summary of the stakeholder consultation, which was part of stage one of the project. We'll then look at potential data sources and challenges for the Research Link Australia project and then review the project timeline and some upcoming activities. And we'll end with a call for participating. So uh, look at how you can get involved in this project should you wish to. So we have a number of speakers today. The whole webinar is presented by the project team and uh, I will leave it to them to introduce themselves. And we are kicking off with Adrian Burton, who's our deputy CEO. So over to you, Adrian. You're on mute. <laughs> I was having a coughing fit as you were uh, just warming up. Hi everyone. Um, the Research Link Australia program is part uh, is kind of an initiative that comes through uh, NCRIS, the National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy. <coughs> Um, this is a, a Commonwealth government strategy to provide national capabilities where local or institutional capacity just wouldn't be enough to get the scope and scale of the ambition that we're looking for. And so the Commonwealth government has this program called NCRIS um, to kind of um, build that scale for uh, some specific initiatives. There are 24 current um, projects in the NCRIS program <clears throat> and the ARDC um, focuses in on national research data infrastructure and digital capabilities. On the next slide, um, we've got the specific uh, project that we're looking at today. It was funded specifically through uh, NCRIS and I'll get into why uh, the specifics came into place, but the mechanics of it is that there's an 18 month project running from <clears throat> October 22 to March 2024. And we're looking to get our first uh, minimum viable product by that stage, but there is a 48 month uh, plan to uh, really embed this within the whole research information ecosystem in Australia. Um, we're using a co-design approach and you'll get the report on the initial sort of consultation and participatory design elements of the program. Uh, that's because we understand that this kind of a project uh, really requires buy-in from everyone. Project itself, uh, just before we get there, um, what we're looking at is uh, to bring together um, information about the research sector and about the uh, private sector, business sector to uh, catalyze uh, collaboration. The reason why, you know, the policy reasons why <clears throat> we might be interested in such a, an initiative, I would go back to reports from the OECD that Australia wasn't um, particularly um, well placed for industry research uh, translation and um, there's a number of policy initiatives that have been going through uh, government. Um, it's not really just uh, because it's a policy issue. The mission of research organizations in Australia almost always includes uh, contributing um, to 
the broader society beyond the research uh, sector and uh, specifically um, collaborating with industry to um, catalyze and to improve uh, industrial processes and business processes through the application of research. So this really is what um, uh, research organizations are setting out to do. And uh, similarly, industri industry partners are setting out to um, really tr transform the way they, they do business. Um, so it, we're not just doing this because of these um, policy initiatives, but there are very strong policy initiatives at the moment. Um, and our program has been funded as part of the um, ex, uh, research commercialization uh, initiative and the accelerator initiative. Um, I think we move on to those next slides. Um, why would the uh, ARDC be involved in such a pro project? We are within that NCRIS program <coughs> provide a number of national information services, uh, national catalog to find data from uh, any research organization in Australia. We run national identifier services and collaborate um, with the AF and others to provide services like ORCID and uh, DOIs for, da uh, for data sets. And these are part of the information that allows you to link up uh, information across the, across the whole research sector. So um, that gets us to the problem statement that we're trying to look at, and that would be in the next slide. So the problem of all the things around research uh, industry, research business collaboration, the thing that we are looking to focus on in this project is the information gap. There are lots of things to do with uh, commercialization. It's a very, very big agenda um, that spans, you know, uh, multiple government departments and you know multiple uh, organizations the thing that we're looking here for is the is to look at that information gap you know what it, um, there's no very easy way for uh, to get an overview of research capability in Australia and there's no simple way for researchers to uh, understand where interest might be for for their work uh, so what we are looking at, uh, as part of that whole jigsaw piece puzzle, the puzzle we're really focusing at is how would we create a national research information data asset? And I will repeat that again. So what would be uh, a national, uh, the information about research, you know, all the capability that there is and the interest for business application, how could we, um, uh, as a national infrastructure organization, um, build that up as a national asset um, for the whole sector. Because the ARDC is not looking necessarily to do all the, or is not looking at all, in fact, at doing all the research industry collaboration in Australia. We're just looking to facilitate it through bringing the information together. And so this asset could be used by multiple research organisations, industry organisations, by specific uh, groups that do um, the brokerage. There are a lot of broker groups that we'll hear about, uh, we heard about in the consultation. So what we're looking for is what is that information infrastructure that could support that kind of an activity? Are the people doing the industry research collaboration? And we have NCRIS facilities that have specialist areas of uh, research infrastructure and um, specialist uh, industry partners, uh, ARDC is not looking to replace any of that. All we're trying to, to do is to bring an extra piece here to join up the information about all those different pieces in the um, information ecosystem. So that's what we feel that we can uh, bring to the, to the table. We're also an operator of these kind of uh, inter, uh, national information uh, infrastructures. So um, it's not sort of extra business for us to run an information system to make sure that the identifiers are all linked up between um, industry partners and research organizations. Um, that's not extra business for us, that is our core business. And so uh, we're looking to 
to collaborate with all the, the, the parties that are engaged in research industry, research business collaboration. We are looking to partner with them to provide uh, an underpinning uh, national information capability that would uh, support the work that, that's happening there. We thoroughly also expect that uh, it won't be the only information system, but it would be the core underpinning um, uh, network of information upon which third parties could build much more specialist um, applications that would be specific to particular areas. And so we're looking to really be the, 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 the key organization that's joining up information about research capability and about, um, uh, about uh, industry interest. So um, that's the, our objective. And uh, we're really looking to um, partner with a number of organizations to pull that off. I think I'll stop there and um, let's get on to reporting on the consultation process so far. Uh, thanks, thanks, Adrian, to provide that context. Uh, next, uh, I will provide a summary from the stakeholder consultation uh, uh, phase. So my name is Ming Fang Wu. Uh, I'm product manager of this project. Um, so just to emphasize what Adrian said, what the focus of this project um, so, um, as we know, the, uh, the challenges to research and uh, industrial collaboration are many and are multi-staged, but we focus on the filling the information gap um, to develop and uh, provide a rich and a shared research capability information system uh, to connect researchers and uh, innovators. Uh, with that in mind, we start stakeholder consultation to ensure we design the right thing. Uh, this consultation will help us to understand rather than assume uh, the challenges, needs, opportunities for this uh, Research Link Australia platform. So on these slides, um, we these are the organizations and we have uh, consulted in our stage one uh, consultation we will conduct this consultation throughout the project but here is uh, what we find from the stage one in the stage one we talk to public funded research organizations such as silos and the universities and the government um, agencies and the funders, for example, uh, we talk to people from Department of Industry, Department of Finance, Health and Education, and the funders like ARC, NHMRC. Uh, for the business sectors, we haven't had a chance to uh, have individual person-to-person uh, uh, -person talk, but uh, uh, and to understand that sector we um based on our desktop research so um as you may uh, have know like a uh, silo um published this report about sme enablers and barriers and the department of industry also did this comprehensive study about how enable research um and the industrial collaboration so based on these consultations, we um, summarize the obstacles, pain points, and the need and the benefit need opportunities and benefit for each of these three um, sectors. Uh, these slides and the following uh, two or three slides are there for your reference. I wouldn't uh, go to detail, but provide some highlights of obstacles, pain point. That's where the uh, IAA could potentially leverage and provide a benefit to, um, to, to as a reliever of those pain points. Uh, for example, for government and uh, funding bodies, um, uh, they have 
complex. They have lots of initiatives to push uh, research and uh, industrial collaboration. However, these uh, initiatives are complex and are held by uh, different stakeholders. Uh, as a result, not many business business or researchers are fully aware of those funding opportunities. And uh, because those research capability information um, are held by different stakeholders and the government and their agencies don't have uh, um, information to have a bird eye view what, where the national research capability. And uh, for industrial and the business, um, the, uh, their pain point includes the know which government funding uh, they are eligible to apply. And uh, uh, it's hard to find uh, research collaborators and uh, groups. And uh, also uh, cultural things, not knowing how to engage with researchers and the research organizations. And, uh, and some researchers have a good record in research, but not a necessary winning or uh, want to collaborate with industry. And uh, when industry people reach out to researchers um, could lead to nowhere. So that, that's kind of pain point industrial business facing. And for research sectors, um, there are only a small number of researchers who build their network with industrial partners. And these people are usually like senior high profile researchers. They act as brokers to connect research and industry. They want to have this work done professionally by someone else. They want to concentrate in their research. And uh, and also this also culture things research not knowing what the collaboration readiness and the fitness of business partners. And uh, among across all these three sectors, we find there are a group of people we call them um, facilitators. Um, they their routine job is to make a connection. Um, between research and the industry and uh, help them um, and uh, they do more than make connections. They uh, also help uh, each step of collaboration process. And uh, those people could, um, you know, they could be from uh, research industry innovation facilitators, for example, the department of industry funded silo uh, small and media enterprise connect program. They could become from uh, government or state government tech innovation centers or from research office, commercialization office or business development office from universities. Um, but, but also could be company, they provide specialize the brokerage surveys to either of those sectors. So uh, through this consultation, we collected about 70 user cases. Um, we sum here are the four user stories we summarized from those user cases. Um, for example, as a policymaker, um, research funder or national program initiative. Uh, they would like to know national research capabilities in biodiversity so they can direct the funding effectively and efficiently. Um, or as a application developer of agribusiness, they would like to know who are the top five researchers from their state in their um, in, in the research area of Internet of Things. So these researchers could help them to optimize their network to monitor soil, water, you know, all those um, things impact on the farm productivity. 
or as a research group, um, the uh, this research group, the research nano disk, and uh, find these special nano material working better than other um, other shaped disk in response to um, as, as in response to tumor treatment. They are looking for top five manufacturers in Australia. They can discuss potential production opportunities. So this story um, will be a consideration for our uh, minimal viable product to, to address. So that's a summary uh, from the initial consultation phase. Um, we analyzed the pain point, opportunity and benefit for each sectors. Uh, those uh, initial insight. Um, if you would like to, we, we still continue to the consultation. If you would like to talk to us, please, um, uh, yeah, contact any of us on the project team. So next will be um, my colleagues, Yana, will provide a um, summary of potential data source and challenges. Thank you. Thank you, Ming. Um, we can roll. Yeah. Um, so this being um, information infrastructure, this will be underpinned by data. And data could come from any of the sectors, it, uh, from government, research, business, as well as any of the brokers in between. And um, say, for example, from the research side, we are looking to understand the research capability, but in addition to that, we are also interested to understand the capacity, the interest and the cultural fit, as well as the administrative or infrastructure um, availability. So when I say um, cultural fit, it's uh, the researcher might be fully capable, but they may not have an interest in pursuing an industry collaboration. And similarly, they should be available at that time, their capacity in addition to their capability. So um, the capability part is fairly easy to, um, or somewhat easier to determine because the researchers have outputs and they put out um, uh, various, uh, in various forms, in, including publications and so on. And the researchers can very well be identified with uh, their ORCID IDs. And uh, uh, so, um, as well as their outputs can be can be obtained. And similarly, on the industry side, um, there is uh, you know, business profiles of the industry and the organizational IDs of the industries, and, uh, and their understanding of the research, um, et cetera, would become um, important. And uh, from government, the grants that um, government as well as a funder sector, the grant information and both wins and losses, the tax eligibility, um, IP um, um, information, et cetera, might actually um, come into play. But uh, if you could move to the next one. So not all information is equal. So as you can see, um, the ones in blue are relatively easier to obtain, but the ones in yellow would, would require information input from the sector. And uh, so um, say, for example, we can determine the organizational idea of a business fairly easily. We can get the industry classification and um, of, the, um, of the industry. Um, but on the other hand, um, uh, it, to knowing exactly what that organization does in relevance to research and uh, um, it would, would be as well as their maturity in R&D or their interest in uh, consuming R&D would be something that we might need to um, get more information about. So um, to cut the long story short, maybe if you could roll to the um, uh, next one, Ming. So these are some of the highlights of information that we would, um, uh, to start with, we would like to obtain from other 
um, organization participants like yourselves and your organizations. So for example, from government grants, we can get for a number of grants, what are the successful ones? But if you are able to get the unsuccessful proposals as well, and uh, similarly in the in uh, that that would be that would add a lot of value in in terms of learning and so on. Um, um, having said that, none of the sensitive information needs to be revealed or uh, um, or I mean by you or by um, uh, by us through this portal, but nonetheless knowing what uh, broadly what is available is useful. And partnership um, of current and, and potential partnerships, directories of brokers and intermediaries, some of which we may be able to construct ourselves, but if there is anything that is available, we would like to hear more. And um, business profile, um, as as well as uh, about the engaging or potentially engaging industries, what they do, what's their understanding of the research, and uh, and the researchers' interest and capacity to collaborate. This has, so in to cut the long story short, we I will be uh, seeking out some of this information, reaching out to various organizations, but um, in few have this information. On, um, that were, you would be able to share. Uh, we would be very keen to hear from you as well. Thank, thank, uh, thank you. And then I would hand over to Lyle, our project manager. Um, thanks, yeah. Mink, you forward to the next slide. Uh, so it's fallen to me to um, give you a bit of a cook's tour of what's going to happen coming up in this uh, current phase that we're in. So at the moment, we're working on a kind of co-design intensive stage. Um, I'll drill down a little bit on each of the activities that are going to be happening at this stage. Um, I'll, I'll sort of answer also Jeff's question in the comments there as well at the same time. So the intent is not to use open data. Um, we're not excluding anything at this point, Jeff. Um, I think we're actually, this is the reason why we're doing co-design. Um, what you mentioned about confidentiality causing issues is absolutely correct. <laughs> um, but we want to work through that with the community. I think this is the reason why we're doing this. Um, one of the, the uh, overarching out, uh, advice coming out of the first phase was that the only way this is going to work is if we are doing this in co-design with those people out there um, who are aware of all the challenges. Um, so next slide, please, me. So the heart of this are uh, a series of open co-design workshops. Um, there's going to be four progressive service or business level uh, workshops interspersed with a number of technical workshops. Uh, the service or business level workshops uh, will be focused conversations with a number of different types of stakeholders is what we're aiming to do. Uh, stakeholder horizontals is what we're calling one group of those. Uh, these are the people that can help us to understand the systemic challenges and the information ecosystem challenges that are out there because they are from organizations that are dealing with facilitating industry and um, research collaboration on a day-to-day -day basis or because they are data scientists. They're ordinarily uh, accessing the same types of information to try and provide better insights to their organizations about what's going on. Um, we also need to focus on uh, what we're calling stakeholder verticals. Uh, ideally, we'd like to focus on a few national research domains, uh, national priorities or national initiatives. The idea there is to make sure that whatever it is that we build under the Re Research Link Australia service or Research Link Australia platform or infrastructure can actually flexibly support what different stakeholder needs are going to be. And that might include customization as well. Um, next slide, me. Uh, the reason why we're structuring it this way is uh, some of the overarching advice coming from the initial consultation phase. Uh, two key pieces there besides that we absolutely must do this in co-design uh, is that the very first is that we should be boosting the success of others um, who are doing the same sorts of or whose goals are to actually facilitate linking in research and industry. Um, that was that facilitator stakeholder group that Ming uh, highlighted in her slide. Uh, the other um, piece of overarching advice was that we have to have a balanced approach. 
uh, not only do we need to drive systemic information ecosystem improvement, um, but we should actually focus on a couple of communities of specific need to prove that what it is that we're doing can actually support um, some communities. Uh, next slide. Uh, so going now into the, the technical workshops that I mentioned, three of which we're planning to be interspersed with the, the higher level um, service workshops. Uh, these are going to be based on a working demonstrator or a prototype platform. Um, so they're, they're going to be actually something for people to look at and iterate over. Um, at, that, at this point, we're seeking people who cannot help but think about what this thing needs to look like. Um, so if that's you, we'd really love you to be involved. Um, we are looking for people who are probably going to be routine users of such a product or are routine users of searching and linking, if that's a part of their current job. Uh, or we're actually looking at people who are involved in aggregating similar data sets um, because that's a part of our remit to provide greater access to information uh, or those who are consuming similar aggregated data sets, uh, i.e. in machine readable ways. Next slide. Please. So what is it we're hoping to get out of this co-design phase? Uh, a number of things. First off, the, the prototype that we're working on, we're hoping will be sort of finalized as a proof of concept for the pilot system that we're going to build. And we'll need some technical requirements coming from that as well as to you know, how to implement that. Um, the, one of the goals there, as Adrian mentioned, is it to be a part of ARDC's national services. So that, that's what's going to happen in the next phase. Um, we're hoping to, in co-design, prioritize with our stakeholders what types of new content sources are the most important. Um, we're not going to wait until the end of that phase to start negotiating access to information sources that we, we have identified as being important. Um, at the end of this, we'd also like to know what our service model should look like. What should RLA do in order to better support other people's capabilities, to complement capabilities, uh, not to replicate and to plug gaps that people are actually experiencing. Um, we're all, uh, ah, back, back, one more, back one more. Thank you. <laughs> and um, do we, we're also hoping for a shared strategic framework to come out of that. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that in the previous phase. Uh, sorry, in the next slide. Uh, in the next phase, sorry, go back, Ming, I didn't mean to say next slide. Um, in, in the next stage, uh, we will be then implementing uh, a system that will turn into our pilot service. That does not mean that this service will be finished or perfect at that point in time. Uh, uh, at the moment, we're targeting that towards sort of November timeline to be uh, implemented. And then on into uh, quarter one, quarter two next year will be what we're calling the minimum viable product platform. So co-design will continue um, uh, on that pilot service. Uh, this won't be people's last chances to actually tell us how, how we're going and how we need to improve things, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, next slide. Um, so we're also um, understanding that, that what we need to do is come up with a shared strategy. Uh, that's not just a strategy that's relevant to Research Link Australia, but relevant to everyone who has a stake in this particular information ecosystem improving, uh, specifically for the purposes of, of linking industry and research. Um, so as a part of this shared strategic framework, at the end of the stage, we're hoping for a draft of that. Um, we think it has to include a vision. That vision should include where RLA is situated in the wider ecosystem, but also what the future of that ecosystem needs to look like. Um, necessarily that should include information standards, what's the current state, where do we need to get to in information improvement in order to make these things work, um, and what are our future linking requirements, what can we do now but what do we need to work on in the future. Um, we think that a trust framework is a part of this, relevant to Jeff's comment. Um, we think that the information not only needs to be able to be trusted, trustworthy itself, uh, but we need to be handling this in a trusted way. We need to be concerned with privacy or ethics, working through these things. Um, the goal is for an environment that enables sharing and reuse, not just use through Research Link Australia, if that makes sense to, to people. Um, we also need to look at sustainability. 
How are we going to govern this thing going forward? How are we going to ensure that the community is driving the evolution of this? And then drilling down to the details of that evolution, how do we improve Research Link Australia? Um, how does that evolve, making sure that we're meeting changing environment, changing people's needs? Uh, next slide. Um, another thing we're doing during this period is seeking a number of early test projects. Um, these are, will be early adopters, we're hoping, that will become test cases for using the pilot service. Um, the other thing they'll be doing is helping us to trailblaze a model for how we work with future projects. Uh, these might be funded projects going on in the future, these to be determined. Um, so if anyone's interested in, in becoming that type of early user, um, we'd really like to talk to you. Uh, what are we expecting? We're expecting partners to be committed to this co-design phase with us. We expect there to be a lot of discussion with these particular partners. And because of that, ARDC will provide a lot of support in planning any potential projects. Um, we're looking for projects that test several aspects of Research Link Australia. So that might be providing us with the information or working on improving the information environment uh, or consuming information. Uh, and we're hoping that these will demonstrate a, a clear and practical current need to be able to, re to link research and industry. Um, next slide. So that's about it for the Cook's tool. One last thing to mention, uh, as, as Ming uh, highlighted, while we did focus a little on the industry side of things, we didn't get down to the specific conversation with uh, a range of industry people. Therefore, we'll be continuing industry consultation during this stage. Depending on how that goes, that might transition into co-design workshops with industry as well, if we can find the opportunities to do that. Next slide. So this is a bit of a wrap up slide. Um, how is it that you could participate in Research Link Australia? We've got a couple of different levels. Um, first off, uh, if you just wanna track our progress or even if you wanna participate in Research Link Australia in any other way, um, you can now go to the, our, our recently released website. Um, the QR code and the link is there. It'll be on the next slide too. Um, and register your interest on that web page uh, for following us. We'll provide you with further updates and information about events or seminars, including the co-design workshops. Um, to cover multiple bases, the usual way to get information from ARDC, uh, particularly seminars and workshops and events, will be putting out information that way as well. Um, we'd love you to come with us uh, on this co-design journey to help us uh, build this Research Link Australia platform. Um, and to work on the information ecosystem in general. Um, so we'd love it if you can come along to one or more of the upcoming workshops to commence uh, late in May. We haven't released information about that yet, but they will be released via those channels at the top of the page. Um, also, if you're interested in being an adopter or an early adopter of Research Link Australia, uh, I'd encourage you to attend the co-design workshops to learn more. Um, and to start having a conversation with us uh, as soon as possible. Um, and just to, to let everyone know, you know, we don't intend for the feedback and the co-design to finish at the end of this phase of workshops and seminars. Uh, there'll be plenty of opportunity to provide feedback as we go along. Uh, next slide, me. Um, so we're at the state, that's it, perfect. We're at, we're at the we're kind of at the end of the structured part and would like to actually accept some questions. Um, and you will leave up the QR code there. 